Um, Elmswell uh, has a certain literary ring about it, if you think perhaps um, Mandalay with a, an overlay of, of Bleak House, really. Um, I've been there for 45 years, so I'm entitled to call it Elmsel. But um, for the sake of clarity, uh, I shall call it Elmswell, which used to nestle rather cosily on the old A45. God, those were the days. Midway between Stowmarket and Bury, we're now a bit less cosy. We're subject to forces beyond our control, and we are classed rather Soviet style as an A14 Corridor Village, along with our much posher neighbours at Woolpit and Thurston. This lack of control is known as NPPF, insidious acronym, or IA, um, locally translated as nice place to plonk thousands of houses, all of them patent book, but we're assured by those purveyors of snake oil, the developers, that they are carefully designed and cited to enhance our community vitality. Difficult not to spit at that point, but there we go. Um, we're midway between Felixstowe and Cambridge, almost exactly. So we're a honeypot and subsequently a 48% uplift in our houses over some eight years ensures that we remain the largest village in Mid Suffolk. However, our vitality remains, it is argued, despite this assault rather than of the benefit thereof. But towards a more general context, we've always been a working village. For many years, we were synonymous with the Elmsel, sorry, Elmswell Bacon Factory, a Victorian farmers co-op employing some 600 people and ensuring that the meat raffle in the pub was always worth entering. You could see the meat coming out of the back door on a fright, never mind. Our ambiance is, uh, it's a French word, they're the ambiance. Uh, the ambiance, we have a very low thatch quotient. We've never knowingly featured on a chocolate box or a tin of Christmas biscuits. If ever we see a tourist, it's because they think they're in Elmset. We point them to Colchester and they hope for the best. Therefore, a typical resident's idea of considering whether a building is worth listing is if it's listing, listed, slightly on the her? Huh? They're not really switched on to that sort of thing. The population thereof is 4,000 and rising. They never stand still, so we can count them very well. Our newsletter, of which I've brought a visual aid, which I forgot, um, our award-winning newsletter goes out every month, as it has done for 30 years, but now we're up to 2,019 households, a figure rising by the month. This year's precept was £163,514, uh, the sixth highest in Mid-Suffolk, so we're not the real bad boys. So that's what we are. Our renewable energy saga began in 1998, in the days when, as you'll recall, biodiversity was generally thought to be a washing powder, and COP26 was Ian, our local PCSO based at Stowmarket Police Station. I made that bit up, actually. <clears throat> it was then that we built, and I now press something and it says next. Oh yes, look at this. Slide one. The first phase of a community facility at Blackbourne to replace the 1950s vintage memorial hall. You will see, and I thought I could point it out, and perhaps I can, um, there's a, a sort of gummy pink bit of the roof. That was the original hall. That's what we built in 19, whenever it was. It involved two minor wars, the building of this facility. One with the developer, who only finally conceded, as he waded across a river of blood, the 11 acres of land which became Blackbourne Meadow. So we're standing on 11 acres of land. And one war with a vociferous cohort of residents with connections to and vast affection for the crumbling old edifice. Significantly, in our shiny new hall, we installed, 
and here it says in my notes, pause for sharp intake of breath, muttered curses, and the merest whiff of brimstone, a gas boiler. Hold that thought. In 2012, we expanded Blackbourne to provide a community activity hall, which is the, the sticky up bit with the nicer coloured roof on it. We've added other bits as well, but this was the main thing that we added in 2012. By then, we had our act together with regard to sustainable heating and decided to dig up the football pitch. There was some persuasion needed there and to lay into a meter deep trench a few thousand yards of horizontal plastic tubing, which continued indoors. There it is, indoors. The theory was that the pipes would collect the under soil heat and convey it to the big heat pump thingy in the plant room, which would boost it and send it to the underfloor system. And it worked a treat. So our idea number one was successful. And if you decide to go that route, that's what it begins to look like. It's really very simple. I think it's quite a special pipe, but uh, I don't know. I'm sure screw fix have got some. Idea number two might be instructive. We had thought ahead and we installed a bigger heat pump thingy than was needed. And this we plugged into the radiator system in the old hall. And that worked a treat. Top tip. We kept the old gas boiler in situ just in case for a year or two. Absolutely pointless. It wasn't connected to anything, but very effective in suppressing the doubters because we would tell them, don't worry, if the new system fails, we'll turn the old system on. It worked. So, oh, um, and we did, in fact, if I go back at some stage, and I can't remember when, we threw in some solar panels for good measure. So the, those are they there. And so on. Now, we've contended all the way along that pressure of development requires any responsible community to address the commensurate infrastructure requirements within its remit and control. In other words, if they're going to dump it on you, it's no good arguing, deal with it. Hence, when the opportunity arose, the parish council purchased the redundant Methodist chapel in the village with a community hall attached and looked at the updating of another facility for the village. And we should have it there. So from an enormously long selfie stick, you can see the original chapel, which looks very much like that today. Here was the, the old hall and there it is. You'll recognize it possibly, a structure many might recognize, a fine example of a post-war village hall, flattened brick, accidental attempts at sedum on the corrugated roof here, um, which had to come off, and crittle windows. The very last user of this hall was the baby and toddler group. At the time, we were monitoring temperatures as part of the redesign initiative, and the, the kiddies spent their very last morning in the old hall at four degrees C with their coats and boots on. There are acknowledged problems of old Victorian buildings in terms of thermal efficiency. Please see a taster here. So this is inside the chapel, stripped out. We were prompted by dry rot as well, I have to admit that. But you can see, I mean, what you've got is wall and then the outside world. And what you've got is floor and then the underneath. And what you've got is ceiling and then the outside world. This is a problem. Um, you understand that. Significantly, we dug down the floor lower than we needed to have because we had this idea that once again, we put some of these pipe things in and have another heat pump thingy. But this time, we didn't have enough room to lay them flat. So we imported, we got quite excited. This was the, uh, the big boys toys thing. We loved this, we loved it. So they brought this drill thingy in and here it is. Uh, interesting to see how tightly it can work. So whatever you're, however tight you are, as long as it can get in, it can drill down. And it drilled five substantial holes. Don't ask how deep, they were in meters. I don't understand it. Um, around the very messy business. And the next bit is 
quite easy, much easier. What you do is you poke a pipe down and then it feeds up again. Uh, so you've got water going down and then coming back. And the theory is that it comes back warmer than it went in. I believe anything, really. Um, so that goes indoors. And this is the indoors of the new build facility on this second uh, exercise of ours. So you'll see exactly the same thing. There's your underfloor pipes. Uh, but in this case, they've started to put the screed on top. And the beauty of, if you can do that, if you don't have to have a suspended floor, is that what you've got is an enormous night storage heater. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Sorry, I'm preempting myself. I'm supposed to go through this and then say it works. So forget I said it was brilliant. Um, if you have got a suspended floor, you don't want that. This is in the wrong order. No. No, we've missed one. Have we missed one, somebody? Somebody technical? Yep, we've missed one, no matter. If you have got a suspended floor, I have uh, at home a picture of a suspended floor in this, sorry, in this state. So ready, ready for the pipes to go in. And the way you do it is you just put bits of old wooden plank across it and then you put the pipes underneath, etc., etc. And you don't clearly get the efficiency of the night storage heater. So we put all of that into something which looked, we took the roof off just to do this picture for you. Um, this is the chapel with a suspended floor in it. And this is the new facility with what we call the coffee shop and a meeting room. And this is a coffee shop with one of those um, barista persons. We have barista persons who come and make all those noises. <laughs> It's really exciting stuff. And lots of lavatories. You have to have lots of lavatories. So that's what we were heating with underfloor heating fed from holes in the ground. With its roof on, the chapel now looks like that. So underneath here is underfloor heating fed from holes in the ground. We had to augment it with radiators. We didn't want radiators. We wanted a beautiful, completely empty void ready for people to have weddings and exciting things. We had to put some radiators in, but uh, we're a bit disappointed with that. But it was the only way we could guarantee, because however, you can only, as you're aware, I'm sure I'm telling you how to suck eggs, you can only insulate old walls to a certain extent. If you go too far, they start to sweat and do all sorts of horrible things and distort everything. So the architect chap, who we paid, God bless him, um, the architect chap advised, so we've got the maximum that we could get in terms of insulation, a brilliant system of secondary glazing here, which you can't see in detail, over the old Victorian. We couldn't secondary glaze that. Great pity, but we just couldn't do it. We would have ruined it. So those inefficiencies means we had to have the radiators. But in the coffee shop bit, and there it is, being used as a coffee shop, these are people using a coffee shop. So underneath here, again, solid floor, Warmest toast. I was in there today, 21. It would have a very cold snap, not a problem at all. So there you have three examples. We've got uh, a big space with underfloor in concrete. We've retrofitted an old hall without any extra insulation, uh, but because we've got a big heat unit there, that is working. And again, I was in there this morning, and that was a 21 again, and the Pilates ladies agreed it was very nice. Thank you. Um, and we've also then got the mixture here of suspended floor with the vertical drilling, which means that there's no excuse. We haven't got the land to do it. Just dig down. As long as you can get that machine in, you can have uh, your pipes. There's more. I'm not sure what it is. So I think we're here today. We're invited today because we have gained this practical experience at several levels involving community, involving heat pumps in community settings. And the big things, the big ticket experience is the ease of management. If you are managing a village hall, and I'm managing both of these, it is brilliant not to have to go to bed thinking, did I turn the heating off? And wake up thinking, did I turn the heating on? and then waiting for the heating to pick up so the Pilates ladies can, oh, that hurts. Uh, so the Pilates ladies can do that thing that hurts. Um, you don't have to think about that. 
you've got this, what they call low grade, which I think does it a disservice. You've got this low grade heat coming in all the time. So I walked in this morning at six o'clock, God help us, and it was 21, no problem at all, despite the fact of being the cold snap. So that is a big plus, an enormous plus. The minus is, the practical minus is, it's very unresponsive. If all of a sudden we have a heat wave, you're too hot. The most common fault we've had is too hot. We get over the first one by having a dozen ordinary plug-in three kilowatt heaters. And over the last six or seven years, we have had to use those because it was, it was too cold three times. That's all. Uh, and what we have is this technical approach to too hot where we open the windows. And that seems to, it seems to work a treat. Really. It didn't cost us a lot. Um, what I can't talk about is the cost. We were in the lucky position of hitting renewable heat incentive when it was still going. And we, we reaped enormous benefits from that. Uh, we always run our facilities at a profit. We've, we've got enormous advantages over smaller villages. We've got enormous demand and we are tight. We, we will do anything for money. And so, uh, but part of that was RHI. It does mean that the village is getting this glorious warm facility uh, at, at no cost, effectively at no cost on the rates. So I can't talk about cost and I can't talk about the technicalities. There are so many people who know exactly how deep the holes are, how many holes you will need and all of that. And by the time I tell you what we've done, it's way out of date, I'm sure it is. A lot of things when you get to a certain age are terribly out of date. You realize when you put your pajamas on every night. So we are completely sold on this technology. To the extent that, I have another slide. To the extent that, now you'll recognize this. Stop me if you've heard this one. Um, this is the, uh, somewhere, where is it? Yeah, here's the chapel. Is it? Yeah, this is the chapel here. This is the new build. This is the car park. Next door, immediately contiguous, don't you just love that word? Immediately contiguous, next door, Green King suddenly decided to flog their pub. Grotty old pub. But they had in the garden planning permission for eight more desirable houses, just waiting to add vitality to our village. Um, so we bought it. We went to the Public Works Loan Board. And if you're going to learn anything today, if in doubt, go to the Public Works Loan Board. They do exactly what they're saying that's in. They're brilliant. Just don't tell the charge payers at all. Um, so we went to PWLB and we bought this site. And um, we now have a pub, which we bought as a co concern, and we're keeping it going. But we're going to repeat the Wesley experience there with the added bonus of, instead of the eight desirable residences here, we're putting 10 affordables. We formed a community land trust, and those affordables will be part of a community heating program shared with the pub. Now, I say that with all the confidence of somebody who doesn't know what on earth he's talking about. I have no idea. I've never done it. But we'll do it because it's there to be done. And the beauty of all of this technology is it's growing faster than your ideas. So by the time you get to doing it, it's easier and cheaper. So although you haven't got RHI, Renewable Heat Incentive, it doesn't really matter because the prices have come down, solar panels being being the classic. So the community gain to us in buying that and in sorting out is very clear. At the heart of our built village, and this is literally in the middle of the built village, uh, handily opposite the chippy, which is great, we will own and control a considerable holding of land with enormous synergy between the two of them. So a wedding in here can enjoy the catering from here, eaten in here. It's just enormous. One can be parking because when they need parking, the pub's empty. When the pub needs parking, the hall's not as full as it might be, etc. Enormous. So we have done that. Um, and our pub will look, we think, something like this. Again, we've taken the lid off just for you. I'll get shot for this. So here again, you will see enormous floor area. And all of this, I imagine, will be a solid floor with underfloor heating from a community heat pump thingy, but shared with 10 houses, if this can be done, I'm sure it can, 
uh, 10 affordable homes on the same site. Um, this is from our share perspectives, because of course we've got to get the money to, to build this, but we're working on that. We're well in advance, a community pub. Uh, so the graphic, this graphic was drawn up by our architect who got us to, um, to a project design stage. So we're there and we've paid him off. And he said to us uh, at a fairly early stage with a sense of resignation, I, I suppose you want heat pumps again. And it was a pointless question really, because it's clearly the way to go. And I would suggest if it's at all appropriate to any of you, it is definitely the way to go. That's all I have to say. Yep.